untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. It's been a while since I've last covered the format, but it has been shaken up recently by the nerf of Orcish Bowmasters no longer triggering when it enters the battlefield, and the One Ring now costing one mana to activate. So it's time to revisit the format using one of the better decks now, I believe. Since Orcish Bowmasters got nerfed, one toughness creatures are back on the menu, so we can fit in Elvish Mystic and the Lanor Elves in this Green Devotion strategy, which also gets to play with Utopia Sprawl, probably the best addition in Historic from the Enchanted Enchanting Tales from Wilds of Eldraine, awesome in a ramp deck, especially in Green Devotion, where not only it increases our devotion, is harder to interact with than our various one mana elves, but can also be untapped with a card like Kiora to generate even more mana. And then of course one of the centerpieces of a Green Devotion ramp deck is going to be Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, which counts our devotion to green and can then generate a huge mana advantage. We've got plenty of triple green 3-drops, such as the Old Growth Troll, which we can play on turn 2, and Pelucanos Reborn, the troll when answered can also turn into an enchantment, which can go on one of our lands making double green. And then Pelucranos, a legendary creature, so this one we can actually cast on turn 2 using our Delighted Halfling, and that's one of the drawbacks of Halfling is that it doesn't cast a turn 2 Old Growth Troll, but with Pelucranos, since it's legendary, we can still tap it for green mana. And then the upside over the typical 1-1 Elves is that this is a bit larger, of course, and can also make some of our legendary cards uncounterable, which can be relevant against control. So I'm still playing 4 copies of Halfling alongside 4 of the regular 1-1 Elves. And then we also have two copies of Wolf Will Haven, which is similar to Utopian Sprawl, just costs one more mana, could also be sacrificed late game. And then Kiora not only generates extra mana by untapping our lands enchanted by these various cards, or by untapping Nykthos, but can also draw extra cards whenever we play one of our bigger creatures. And then at 4 mana there's Karn the Great Creator, which can shut down opposing artifact synergies, and can tutor up various answers or win conditions. Of course the sideboard is something you can tinker with quite a bit. I've got Tormod Script to shut down graveyard combo decks, Shadow Spear against the more aggressive burn strategies, can immediately suit up one of our larger creatures and start attacking. The ability to make permanents lose hexproof and indestructible can actually be relevant too. And then there's a liquid metal coating, great synergy with Karn, can play it, maybe activate it in the opponent's upkeep on one of their lands, so it can't actually tap for mana, and can also shut down other various cards from the opponent, and then if we use it in our turn, and then plus Karn on the opponent's land, then it will essentially die, since it's going to be a 0-0, so that can also give us a nice repeated land destruction effect. And then there's Godfarrow's Statue, which can also try to lock the opponent out of the game. If we're ahead of mana, then making all the opponent's spells cost two more can make it very difficult for the opponent to come back. And then we can also start animating it with Karn to turn it into a 6-6 creature to start beating down. Then a Platinum Angel is mostly here to deal with opposing creature decks that don't pack a lot of removal. Thinking of Mono Green Elves, which is also going to go up in popularity now with the Orcish Bowmaster nerf. A deck that can be very explosive and can present lethal before we manage to set up our defenses. So then a Platinum Angel can be a way to avoid losing the game. And then the opponent may only have Boseju to try and answer it. And this can also be true for other creature matchups. And then we've got our finishers, Cityscape Leveler, which can destroy opposing permanents, and then a Portal to Phyrexia, which can then also recycle some of our finishers like a Leveler and Platinum Angel. And then we've got Cavalier of Thorns, another staple of these Green Devotion decks, great at finding our Nykthos, and then also provides three Green Devotion, also mills a few cards in the process, so it could mill over our Storm the Festival, which is great when cast for six mana or when flashed back for ten, and this can find our various five mana permanents, such as our Cavalier of Thorns, we've got a one of Voring Clex, which will find two forests when it enters the battlefield, and not too difficult to transform it for eight mana in this deck, and then the Grand Evolution can also do a ton of damage, and then a Nissa who shakes the world, essentially doubles our mana by letting our forest produce an extra green and then untapping some of our lands like Nykthos with a plus one ability can also be quite synergistic. And then we've got a Lair of the Hydra which can also turn into a win condition in the late game if we've got a lot of mana, plenty of forest to go with a Nyssa and to make sure we have enough forest for Utopia Sprawl as well. And then a Boseju which can maybe deal with opposing non-basic lands, artifacts or enchantments. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay we're on the play. Missing a 1 mana accelerant, double haven into Karn. There are matchups where this could be okay, but I think it's not quite explosive enough. Okay, this is not amazing, but probably better overall. Can let go of one troll, and then turn one 
I'm going to go for Utopia Sprawl, so if we draw forests, we can actually play a troll. Turn 1 planes, and Soul Warden a life gain deck. Okay, I'm just going to play Halfling, hope for a land next turn. So green-white probably involves the Heliod life gain combo. For now, triple Soul Warden. And there's a land. So I could already play Karn. It does leave it vulnerable to the attacks from Soul Warden. So I think I prefer playing the creature, especially before opponent plays something that can pick up plus one counters when they gain life. And then we can play our Planeswalkers afterwards. A Righteous Valkyrie, so it is an Angel life gain deck. And already gets to pump the team. Probably go for Vorinclax over Nyssa, since Nyssa's going to be under too much pressure from their creatures. And then now we've got a Reach blocker for Righteous Valkyrie. A resplendent Angel. Yeah, that's pretty effective. Our opponent's going to get another Angel token end of turn. So we're pretty far behind. Kiora the draw. But I could play Nissa, animate the forest. Let's say we tap the Halfling. And then I would have three. For five mana, play Kiora, untap the three mana producing land, so it kind of pays for itself, play Karn, and then get something like a Platinum Angel, although can imagine our opponent having some removal in their deck for it, or we can get a Portal to Phyrexia, which still probably doesn't win us the game, but those are kind of the options. Now there's a bunch of Planeswalkers that they have to contend with. And then, yeah, I don't think Platinum Angel is the way to go. So maybe get a portal to Phyrexia. And then even if they can take out Nyssa, we might have enough mana to get there. Collected Company could be very bad for us. It's Moondancer Innkeeper. So they might still be packing the Heliot Infinite Life Gain combo with Scurry Oak, but seems more like an Angel Life Gain deck with some traditional win conditions. But now with Moondancer they get to dig towards another collected company, perhaps. They get to make more Angel tokens. Could also transform Vorinclex. Of course now Portal doesn't look nearly as good. As their opponent's got plenty of things they can sacrifice to it. So trading Vorinclax and then eventually getting it back may not be a bad idea. Alright, we'll trade. And then we could still get a Platinum Angel here to make sure we don't die. And then with Portal to recur it. Opponent will need something like Boseju, and then attack us in the turn that they take out the Angel. Which is very much possible. Could also get a Cityscape Leveler to whittle down their board. So, having options is nice. So let's say we start with Portal to Phyrexia. And then next up, Karn can minus. Maybe
maybe I should go for leveler over Plantinum Angel. Try and keep the board under control. And then Resplendent Angel versus Righteous Valkyrie is probably the decision here. With Moondancer Double Soul Warden, they may not be able to trigger Resplendent Angel. So let's go for the Righteous Valkyrie, shrink their team down a bit. Draw a card. And no attacks. Okay, got to cast two of our finishers in one turn. Let's see if that's enough. Another collected company was to be expected. And yeah, they hit pretty nice. Another Valkyrie and another Resplendent Angel. So now I'm regretting not taking out the initial Resplendent Angel. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Leveler can still attack and take out one of their Angels next turn. While Portal gets back Vorinclex, which we can transform right away. And then uh, Pono needs to start pressuring our various Planeswalkers. So Kiora down. And we can protect Nissa, which seems worthwhile. Gonna go for a swim and cool off. Opponent keeps on top, so it might be another collected company here. And get back Warring Clicks. Draw an Elvish Mystic. Okay, so a leveler can attack. Don't think I'm animating Portal to Phyrexia with Karn, although I guess there's no huge downside. Don't expect any creature removal specifically that uh, would be able to take care of it. But then I don't think we're attacking with it, just gonna keep it on defense. Evil cannot and then a leveler can attack. And then I'm probably transforming Vorinclex here. I guess we could start there. And we hit Cavalier. Polychronos is a good one. Opponent is going to get to trigger Double Resplendent Angel here, so good that we get to take out one of them. Since this does trigger at the beginning of each end step, including ours. Now we've got a few additional Reach creatures on defense. Find Nykthos. Okay, that gives us a bit more mana. So we can keep going. Flashback Storm the Festival. Finding Karn and Troll. And then we can use Nissa to untap Nykthos. Make more mana. While Karn. Probably goes for Platinum Angel here. Rise, my elemental friend. Can play an elf first. Trigger Soul Warden a bunch more. And then let's just do this now. 
play the Angel, can transform Polychronos. If they have something like a Johnny, the Planeswalker, then they can essentially wipe our board, and I imagine it's game over. Okay, transform Polychronos. Paying two life. And I think that's all we can do besides attacking with Cityscape Leveler. And yeah, hopefully we can survive. Next turn I could ultimate Nissa. Still gonna be a while before we can actually threaten lethal since our opponent has such a high life total. And we did mill a bunch of cards. So I'm not sure how this game is gonna end. Depends what our opponent has in their deck. Opponent is gonna pressure Nissa. More creatures going after Karn. So I don't think we can realistically save Karn. We have uh, three flying or reach creatures, but we can ultimate Nissa if we'd like. Although I'm not sure if that's super relevant. So yeah, there's two angels going after. Nissa. So I can double block and trade and then hope to keep portal around. Okay, this seems good enough for now. Opponent had another collected company. So if they hit a righteous Valkyrie, they get to Eat my Polychronos for free. And they did. Okay. Still get to take out the author 88. And we still get to save Nissa, which we'll be able to ultimate. Get all our forests, make our lands indestructible. But yeah, this is definitely a setback. The seven counters from Vorinclex don't look all that amazing right now. Their so opponents cast Triple Company, one left in the deck that they can dig towards. And then maybe a Boseju could also be quite relevant here. So 40 cards versus 26. We're definitely decking first, so we somehow need to deal with the opponent's entire board. Which is gonna take a while. Portal, get back. Platinum Angel. Soul Warden keeps triggering. So if we play too many more creatures, our opponent gets to trigger Resplendent Angel again in my turn, but we'll take it out with a leveler here. Distribute seven counters. Could also take out the Moon Dancer, but I think Resplendent Angel is still more threatening, even though they get to eat leveler for free that way. And then could put some counters on Platinum Angel, maybe a few on Cavalier of Thorns. So let's say we make this up to a 9-9, nine, nine, and this is 7-8. Okay, so can ultimate Nissa get all the remaining force out of our deck. Which aren't many. So we still have Storm the Festival, Cavaliers, one Karn. So not a whole lot. And then... Should have maybe floated a bunch of mana if we were planning to activate Lair, but I don't think we were. So... I'm just gonna attack with a Cityscape Leveler. Take out Resplendent. And then hope our Platinum Angel can stick around. Opponent takes the damage. So 
at least all these creature lands are now indestructible. Not gonna matter if our opponent ultimates in a Jani and exiles my stuff. And there's Resplendent number three. So more angels on the way. So 21 draw steps remaining. I don't even think I'm casting a Storm the Festival at this point. Just gotta try and get as many turns with Portal to Phyrexia as possible. Not sure if we can afford to transform Vorinclex a second time. The Angel's attack. Seems safe enough to block with Platinum Angel here. Not enough mana for instant speeds, collected company. And then we can just block Moon Dancer with one of our indestructible lanes. Could also double block the Angels, but want to keep as many creatures as possible next turn for the mass fight that's incoming. And the One Ring, okay. It's not going to protect their creatures at least. Although our opponent can certainly afford to draw a lot of cards with their One Ring. But uh, yeah, this final chapter is certainly going to help. Can start by finding the Righteous Valkyries, and once those are gone, their creatures are a lot smaller. So I'll go full control, so we can animate a Lair of the Hydra uh, before we turn creatures into fighters. And then I think I'm still happy with Polychronos here. And then animate Lair. We do still need a bit of mana to uh, actually fight with, but we've got a Nykthos, so that should suffice. And then if I make this an 8-powered creature, is that good enough? Soul Warden triggers. Alright, so we should be able to clean up the board nicely. Okay, so we get to fight here. So let's say we pay one. A lair finds Valkyrie. I guess I should start by activating Nykthos. I guess we can also just activate several times. It's not limited to once per turn, so we can just use our indestructible lair. Maybe should have made it even bigger to try and take out Moondancer. Although we can just use Cityscape Leveler, that's gonna be easier. Yeah, I've not been in this situation before, so this final chapter is new to me. But yeah, killing all their creatures is pretty effective. Our opponent does have the One Ring protecting them, so no point in attacking other than Cityscape Leveler. And our opponent explodes! Awesome! Vorinclex's final chapter for the win. This was one epic battle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. Turn 1, probably go for Elvish Mystic. And then we can still go Utopia Sprawl plus Troll on 2. Already have our Nykthos, so we're gonna make a lot of mana here. Opponent on blue white, so a control deck. Strict Proctor makes Cavalier a bit less exciting. Although I can still pay the two. So I think that's the move. Find a forest. And we did mill Storm the Festival. Okay, so pretty insane start. 
I have to see what we want to get with Karn. Can always uh, look at our sideboard here. And uh, Godfarrow's statue could be effective. Opponent has the Divine Purge, which is a bit of a setback, but uh, should be able to get back on the board quickly. So we can activate Nykthos, play another Cavalier. And then potentially play another Nykthos just to make a bit of extra mana here. So we'll have seven mana left, which lets me play Karn, play Mystic, put Statue in hand perhaps. Can expect our opponent to have a Supreme Verdict next turn. So don't need to overextend into it necessarily. Could also get a liquid metal coating and then target the opponent's land in their upkeep so it doesn't tap for mana. And then next turn get statue. So let's put a stop. Attack for five. So now they won't be able to cast a 4-mana Sweeper. And then Karn probably going for Statue next turn to try and lock them out. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Halfling can set up turn 2 Polucranos. Or we can keep developing our mana with Haven to try and set up an early Storm the Festival. And there's another one. Polucronos makes sense, it still kind of ramps us thanks to Nykthos. Opponent fetching a Swamp Island. So the uncounterable ability on Halfling could also come in handy against control. Edict makes me sack a creature. Probably get rid of Halfling. Karn is next. So can't quite play it here. But can play Haven. And attack for four. So if they don't have another removal spell, we would still need a land to storm the festival next turn. Utopia Sprawl would also do it, increasing our devotion. It looks like our opponent's a blue-black mill deck. Okay, that makes Storm the Festival a little bit weaker. Kyura was an excellent draw. So, activate Nykthos. Play Kyura. Untap Nykthos. Got five mana, so enough for Karn. And what do we want to get? Could go for Tormod's Crypt as something we can play right away. Could potentially mess with the opponent's graveyard if they're playing some graveyard recursion here. But um, Godfarrow Statue is probably the card we want to resolve, making their spells more expensive. And we could eventually look into Platinum Angel, but our opponent has answers for it. At least Hideous Laughter is not the best against us, since we have some expensive cards in our library. They will need a counter spell for a statue, most likely. Ritual of Soot kills Polucranos, but with Kyura untapping or Haven land, we'll still be able to cast the statue. So I think that's the plan. One drop ripples and, grows. and then what do we get with Karn? You will not Could go for coating to target their lanes, but if we lose Karn, that would be a little awkward. Although Blue Black's not gonna have an easy time removing my Planeswalker. Could also go for Leveler to just destroy Jace next turn but we'll still need a bit of extra mana for it. Yeah. 
and then we can plus Karnon statue if we'd like to finish off their planeswalker, although it will expose it to maybe another Shieldred's Edict. Mesmeric Orb is going to mill us for a bunch. Untapping my land with Kiora also will uh, trigger the orb. Now we could Boseju blow it up, but that will give the opponent an extra land, so it kind of counteracts our mana denial strategy. So definitely an interesting spot. I am considering animating Statue to kill Jace. And then just get a Platinum Angel at some point to avoid decking. It's another Cura, double Utopia Sprawl. I guess Utopia Sprawl isn't bad, since if we enchant the same land, then we're not uh, untapping a lot of permanence for Mesmeric Orb. And then I could still Boseju you the Mesmeric Orb, or I can just play Liquid Metal Coating and hit their land. It's so an upkeep. We want to target their Watery Grave, most likely. They could still Edict me in response. Okay, so that doesn't tap for mana. We've got 39 cards remaining, and a pretty fast clock if Statue survives. Just a Rune Cram for 3 mana, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Plenty of ramp into a Karn. If our opponent has a discard spell, then we'll need another powerful top deck. And then I don't mind playing turn one Mystic since we have Sprawl for next turn. If this dies, that's okay. Double Mountain and Snoop's opponent on Goblins. Okay, so we can play Utopia Sprawl, but uh. Not going to use it for mana this turn. And then next turn, Cavalier of Thorns. Hope to find Nykthos. Maybe milling a Stormed Festival would be nice. Looks like our opponent's on Mono Red Goblins, so don't need to fear any black removal goblins. Warchief. Okay, so... Muxus is approaching. For now, play Cavalier. And then, yeah, the plan might be Vorinclax transform it. Or we can play Karn. And then, possible that Platinum Angel is uh, good enough against goblins if they don't have any removal spells. And if I play Karn, four mana left. Is there anything in particular we would want? Don't have Pithing Needle for Krenko, which would have been an option. Could Liquid Metal Coating, but if we target Krenko, they just activate in response. And yeah, could potentially Coating their land, but it feels like we need to get a win condition like Platinum Angel, and then hope they can't kill it. And then next turn I'll be able to cast it. So sure. Now our opponent knows what we're working towards, so they can plan accordingly. A gem palm incinerator could still take it out. And they've got the uh, one mana Skirk Prospector. They can still make a lot of mana here to empty the rest of their hand. And a goblin matron likely gets Prospector if they don't have one already. And then we could see Muxus. So there's Prospector, sack a Goblin and a Red. Activate Krenko, and then sacrifice five Goblins to cast Muxus, potentially. Instigator is an extra Goblin, and there's Muxus on top, so they don't even need one in hand. So we may not survive this turn. If we do, then we're all in on this Platinum Angel surviving. 
And if our opponent has any removal with Goblin Matron, they'll be able to find it. Opponent with double ringleader, another war chief. Yeah, this looks like a pretty lethal army to me. Chieftain pumping the team. So we have to jump Muxus, and then there's still an army of goblins knocking at our door. So yeah, just not quite fast enough. Another Muxus, so this is overkill now. Probably wanted to sacrifice the first Muxus and an all-out attack. Yeah, I don't think there's any point in trying to block. Let's see how much damage our opponent can deal. Minus 62, not bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Halfling can still cast, turn to Pulukronos, since it's legendary. Facing some multicolor deck. Yeah, going for turn one halfling seems fine. Opponent could be on a domain deck of sorts, which could cast a turn to a leyline binding. It's gonna be a lightning helix instead. Double elf it is. And then next turn we could still play Cavalier. It's gonna be a Fable on three. And Kiora, so just going for Cavalier. And then next turn we can untap Nykthos with Kiora. Just going for Forest. Now a Leyline Binding could exile Cavalier, let the Shaman attack, and we could fall behind. Opponent just discarding some Trilines. Crucius, also now back on the menu, now that the Bowmasters are gone. Discarding Unburial Rites, so they've got a reanimation package here. Probably alongside Atraxa. So I could get Karn, and then and get uh, Tormod Scripts. But maybe that's not the best use of my resources. Either way, play Polychronos, which will increase my devotion. And then we can tap Nykthos. Play Kiora. And tapping Nykthos. We did miss out on the card draw this way, but the extra mana seems worth it. And then make a boatload of green. So we've got 13 mana total. Can Karn and get Portal to Phyrexia and cast it. And that's enough for a concession. Karn also shutting down the opponent's treasure tokens. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn 1 Halfling versus Lenor Elves. If we draw Old Growth Troll, I might prefer turn 1 Elves. It's going to be a Karn instead. And then hopefully next turn Cavalier. Opponent Esper Control, perhaps. And a Vanishing Verse Exiles Halfling. Can still play Karn. And then what to get is the question. Could get a Liquid Metal Coating to target the opponent's lands with since I'm not close to casting anything else. Especially if they killed the elves, we can at least make a play, as opposed to, of course, Cavalier, which would be the preferred sequence. Opponent's got a Grease Fang. Okay, so a Grease Fang reanimator deck means we want to get Tormod's Crypt now. And that will at least prevent a combo kill. Although Karn also shuts down the crew on vehicles. So it's not super threatening right now. 
but it's good to have a backup in case they answer Karn. And now Nykthos can generate quite a bit of extra mana. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing some early acceleration, so I don't think we can keep. This is a bit better. What do we keep? So, could ditch one of the creatures. And I guess we'll make it Halfling, since Elves can set up turn 2 Troll. And then Haven's a bit more reliable when it comes to ramping. And also better if we find Kiora. We'll still need some help off the top. Put on blue-black. And a Fatal Push kills our Elf. Cavalier's a good draw. Let's see if the troll resolves. And does not. Well, still have another shot next turn with Cavalier. And then I could play Nykthos already. Opponents with a Ransom in response. Bowmasters has been nerfed, so that one's not nearly as good now. So let's see here. These are phased down, so Bowmasters, and then maybe a Drown phase down. Let them keep Snapcaster, Lordian Revealed if they want. Opponent goes for Bowmasters, Drown. And Drown will be an effective counterspell. But at least we found a creature land here. And get to untap, finding Kiora. So can play Kiora, see if there's a response. And then I'm probably gonna end up animating a layer of the Hydra. Bono counters. And X equals three. Bowmasters could have punished a card draw from Kiora, but uh, makes sense why they countered. They could have a fatal push for Lair, but gotta keep up the pressure here. It's gonna be a go for the throat on Cavalier. Now we can put something nice on top, such as Karn, which it's not gonna have a ton of mana to work with, but is still maybe the best pick overall. I'll take Karn over a random top deck. Alright, let's play our Planeswalker. And then gonna minus. Part of me wants to play something that I can play right away, so we play around a discard spell. But the only effective card would be a liquid metal coating, which isn't all that amazing here. So, might go for Leveler, which if they make us discard we can still unearth it at least. And then we don't want to animate Lair of the Hydra. X would only be one, so they could ambush it with the Bowmasters, just by blocking it with a 1-1. So we'll pass a turn. Opponent plays the Bowmasters. And another one. Okay. So Karn will take two. Unable to minus again. I do not feel pain. And Mystic the draw. Not all that exciting. So can play Leveler but can play Mystic, keep up Lair. Could sacrifice Wolf Willow Haven, but want to keep the extra mana to eventually cast Leveler. Opponent with a third Bowmasters. Yeah, these are not quite as good as they used to be. Bones attacking. Yeah, let's animate Lair and see what happens. 
So x equals 4. Opponent with another rain similar response. I guess we'll go fatal push face up, with the rest face down. Opponent goes for the lanes. Now their bowmasters is a ring bearer, but we can still trade. And a storm the festival was excellent, so let's start there. Finding Kiora old growth troll would trigger bowmasters. Definitely should have plus Karn first. Could also just go Utopia sprawl troll and forgo Kiora. And then plus. Awaken. And then next turn we could flash back Storm the Festival. Another Utopia Sprawl we can play. And then I could minus Karn, get some other finisher, in case we hit another Karn with flashback Storm. And then a portal to Phyrexia comes to mind. So 11 mana total. Yeah, let's just flashback Storm. Might be able to keep comboing here. Finding Nissa and Forest. And then if we untap this Forest, it does make a fair bit of mana, and that's enough for a concession. All right, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is missing a one mana accelerant, but we do have a turn two haven. So hopefully that's good enough. Opponent red black. Inquisition probably takes Wolfolo Haven. And then I'm. Potentially unable to play Old Growth Troll and Polychronos. Can still play Kiora first. If they don't have a great answer to Kiora, we could also see them taking it since it threatens to draw a lot of cards. And that's what they did. Okay, so next turn could start with an Old Growth Troll, which is somewhat likely to eat a removal spell, but then can at least enchant our land. Fable on three. Bones probably playing Crucius now that the Bowmasters have been nerfed. And a Molten Impact takes out our troll. Now importantly, we still keep our Devotion for Nykthos, so that's great. And Halfling the draw. So this can tap for 3 mana. Can play Halfling. And then still activate Nykthos. Play Cavalier. And find a lair. That looks good. I guess I could have gotten the untapped land and still play Polychronos here. But a creature land can come in handy. Opponent's gotta go for the throats. Is there anything we want to get back? I guess a Kiora would be decent. With two creatures in hand that can draw. And with Nykthos, Kiora can easily pay for itself. So Reflection is still a concern if they can find a creature to kind of combo with it. They've got two cards left. Hive can also exile cards from our graveyard if we were to mill Storm the Festival. And a Seasoned Pyromancer is going to go digging. 
Okay, hoping to dodge a discard spell here. Okay, so step one, play Kiora. Then make mana with Nykthos, untap it. And then probably just play Cavalier. Could also tap Nykthos first in case we hit another Nykthos, but that doesn't seem needed. And we missed, but we did mill Storm the Festival. Times two, which I can still flash back. So, let's see here. Can't quite play Polychronos and then activate Nykthos. A little bit short. But Flashback Storm the Festival looks good. And then we'll leave the Halfling on defense, sure. Finding Nyssa. And Utopia Sprawl. Could enchant the forest that can make a lot of mana. It's a bit all in on one creature. So it could just enchant a different land here, animate it, still play Polychronos. Sometimes we can name white so we don't have to pay life to transform Polychronos, but. So this will tap for three. Could attack first. Happy to trade for a reflection. Okay, draw another card. And we've got another cavalier lined up. So now our opponent can copy Pyromancer with reflection to make lots of 1-1s one and draw a couple cards. But we'll see how they deal with our planeswalkers. Invoke Despair. Sacrifice a creature, it's going to be the Halfling. Enchantments can be the Utopia Sprawl. And then Planeswalker. Probably hang on to Nyssa. And then our opponent can still copy Pyromancer end of turn. And that's enough for a concession. Yeah, the Mono Green Devotion deck can be pretty brutal against these mid-range strategies, especially once we find Karn to shut down all those treasures and to find various cards out of the sideboard to go over the top. Alright, so we faced a wide variety of matchups here in the new historic meta game, and overall seems like a pretty healthy meta from the looks of it, without Bowmasters mowing one drops down, and without the one ring being in every deck. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.